Good morning. And welcome to worship here at Granville United Methodist Church. Uh, would you please take out the registration pad at the end of the pew and sign in and pass it down. And if you're a visitor with us this morning, first of all, please be very glad, very, please know that we're very glad to have you here with us. And if you will leave us contact information, we'd like to reach out to you with a personal welcome in the coming week. Um, I have a couple of announcements. The one is in your bulletin about the Seacom food drive next Sunday. Um, we invite you to bring everything that you can, clean your cupboards, go to the store. Uh, we want to raise a, 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 gather a lot of food this time. And today, as you leave, there will be someone at all the exits handing out grocery bags for you to put your contribution in. And Ann, Wal Ann McDaniels and Jan Walters would like to thank everybody that helped with food and help in the, ser in the serving of the luncheon yesterday in memory of Maxine Wells. And if you brought something in a dish and have not retrieved it, they are in the narthex. And we ask you to please take them home because our counter downstairs is full. And we're about to have an auction. And if you don't take your dish, we're gonna auction it off. Uh, I think that's all I have for today, Pastor Wyatt. I'm actually going to invite forward our youth director, Joel Baker, to share a little bit about uh, Operation Christmas Child. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about the Operation Christmas Child, which the youth group will be uh, doing next weekend. Uh, Operation Christmas Child uh, delivers gifts to children in underprivileged countries. And so what the youth group is going to be doing is next Sunday, we're going to get together and we're going to pack and wrap shoe boxes full of toys and hygiene items and school supplies and other things so that uh, Operation Christmas Child can send those to kids around the world. Uh, and so what we're asking you guys to do is just to bring in some donations of old shoe boxes that you guys have, some gift wrapping paper, uh, maybe some small toys and school supplies so that we can fill those boxes full and send them out to uh, a location where they can be distributed across the world. Uh, so thank you guys for helping out with that. That's all I got. Oh, we've got a table uh, outside um, just, beyond, just behind the welcome desk where you guys can put those. Thank you. Thank you all. Good morning. Welcome to worship uh, here at Granville United Methodist Church. My name is Ryan. I'm the pastor here. It's my joy to welcome you on this Stewardship Sunday. Uh, it is a beautiful time of year here in Michigan when the leaves change their colors and the water changes to ice. It is a truly <laughs> glorious time of year. Well, we're thankful for the sunshine and uh, thankful for this place to gather together for worship. Um, as it is Stewardship Sunday, in your bulletin you, you found this morning uh, a copy of our uh, 2020 pledge card. Uh, so we handed these out last week as well, so some of you had the opportunity to think about and pray about uh, what gifts uh, you would like to share in ministry uh, for the coming year. Uh, as noted on the pledge card, there are many different ways. When we become members in the Methodist Church, we pledge our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness. And so on the back of the pledge card there, we have not just financial giving, but many different ways that you can participate and strengthen the ministries of this church as we reach out into the world with the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Uh, there's a place for your name. You can sign up for our email list as well at the bottom if you would like to. Uh, take a moment to pray about your pledge and turn it in during the offering. Um, also on the front side, uh, there's some additional information, including a chart of giving. Uh, the scriptural goal that we receive for giving is 10% or a tithe. Uh, that's always an aspirational goal. Uh, and so there's a chart on there where you can look up annual income and weekly, how that translates into weekly income, and then what percentage uh, that is. So we've done some of the math for you and hopefully saved some steps there. Um, but it is a goal to be striving for. Uh, as we strive to support the ministries of this church. And it's amazing to me when during the announcements time each week, all of the many ways that, when, that this congregation is reaching out, especially uh, in this season of generosity and joy. So it's a joy to be with you as we celebrate Stewardship Sunday together. 
Also, a couple of uh, events that are coming up in the coming weeks. Uh, well, we will have a hanging of the greens after the service on December 1st, which is the first Sunday of Advent. Um, and we will be serving uh, free hot dogs at the tree lighting on December 2nd, uh, just across the street at the Granville Library. And so if you'd like to volunteer for that, uh, you can talk to me or talk to Robin Ballou, who is coordinating for that event. And I believe that is, oh, one more stewardship related announcement. If you would like to simplify things, we have an electronic giving form as well. These can be picked up at the Welcome Center. Uh, I know for me, it's very rare that I and my checkbook and a pen that works are in the same place at the same time. <laughs> and if, if that is true for you as well, ele electronic giving can simplify things in that way. You sign up once and it's automatically deducted out of uh, your checking account or savings account, whichever you deem on there. So if that is an easier way, uh, to take care of your pledge for the coming year, then you're welcome to sign up at the Welcome Center with that form. I believe that is all the announcements for this morning. We are thrilled this morning to have with us uh, Julianne Vanden Weingard, uh, who is our accompanist, as uh, Nancy Poltrock is having surgery this coming week uh, for a knee replacement, and we are very thankful to have Julianne with us this morning. Let us center our hearts for worship with our prelude. Thank you, Julian. If you weren't ready to worship before, you are now. Would you stand as you're able and, and join me in the call to worship? We gather for the worship today to celebrate our gifts. We gather for worship today to celebrate our community. We gather for worship today to celebrate our visions. We 
We gather in celebration. Let us God. Okay, now if you would join me in singing uh, hymn number 87 in the red hymnal, What Gifts Can We Bring? And we'll sing verses 1 and, th one and 3 or 1 through 3. 1 and through. Sing whatever's on the screen. The Lord be with you. Now would you take a minute, just a minute, to pass the peace of Christ to those nearest you. Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good. I'm so glad. So this morning, we are about to hear a uh, Bible reading. 
um, of, about Jesus' first miracle. Does anyone know what Jesus' first miracle was? Hmm, well, that happens at a celebration. There is a wedding going on, and Jesus and his mother Mary are there at the wedding celebration. And yet yeah, now you know what it is. All right, so I've given you a good introduction and some clues. Yes, what happens? You've got it exactly right. Yes. So they run out uh, of wine. So there is nothing to drink at this wedding reception anymore. And so everyone gets a little bit worried. They think the party's over. Maybe we'll just go home. Um, and, but God has something amazing in store. And so Jesus tells the people there uh, to fill some stone water jars uh, to fill them up to the brim with water. And then uh, something amazing happens. So when they take the water and they pour it out, uh, then what actually comes out is not water, but wine. Jesus has turned the water into wine through the power of God. Now, I have not turned this water into wine. I have just turned it into red water. Unfortunately, I don't have miraculous abilities in that area. So that was really more of a magic trick that I just did, right? Because there's probably some sort of secret trick going on there. Yeah, I fooled you a little bit. But miracles, the difference between magic and miracles is that miracles are something that is real, something that God is involved in, something that takes us completely by surprise. And usually miracles are also what we would call a sign in that they point to something more. He wasn't just turning water into wine, but he was sharing with the people how generous God is to all the people who are faithful, how God's grace is overwhelming, and, uh, and that generosity that inspires thankfulness in us. So in this season of thankfulness, we're giving thanks for the many ways that God has blessed us with great abundance. And so in this particular story, Jesus blesses the people there with an abundance of wine, making it from water into wine. But God blesses us in millions of ways each and every day if we're paying attention. So let's give thanks to God in prayer for all of the abundant blessings that we receive. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for miracles, big and small. Help us to see the blessings in our lives this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up this morning. Have fun in children's worship. The first scripture this morning is from, is from the 36th Psalm. It's verses 5 through 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mighty mountains, and your judgments are like the great deep. You save humans and animals alike, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. All people may take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house, and you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light we see light. O oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you, and your salvation to the upright of heart. We give thanks for the abundance of God's blessings in our life today. Whenever we reflect on all that we have been given, on the sacrifice that God has made for us through Jesus Christ, our heart overflows with thankfulness and joy. And one of the ways in which we express that thankfulness is through prayer. And so we share our joys, but not just our joys, but also our concerns, those things that weigh heavily upon us uh, that are, we are struggling with in our lives as well. We lift them up to God, knowing that God listens and that God responds. And so I have some joys and concerns from the congregation to share with you as we lift our hearts together in prayer. 
Uh, we pray for the family and friends of the victims of the school shooting in California. Uh, we lift up Tom and Shirley Winters. So we mentioned uh, last week that Shirley is at home in hospice care uh, with cancer. We lift her up uh, to God at this time. We also pray for Violet and Willie Sherman, uh, who I believe are still in the hospital at this point. Uh, they have both had surgery over the past week, uh, and we lift up the whole Neifert family at this time. Uh, we also continue to pray for the Wells family. Uh, it was a wonderful celebration of Maxine's life here yesterday in the sanctuary, uh, and their family has been such a blessing to this congregation. And so we lift them up uh, during this time of grief, but also of celebration of her life and legacy. Uh, prayers for reconciliation and relational healing uh, between a 16-year-old high school student and his guardian. Uh, that's a prayer from the Nelson family. Uh, prayers for the family of Don Vandercook, who uh, died during surgery earlier this week. So we lift up uh, his family during this time of grief. Uh, we also pray for a family uh, with some relationship issues. Uh, please pray for a father and stepmom um, who are wrestling with issues with a biological mom. Uh, there's a lot of unhealthy, uh, unhealthiness going on in that relationship right now. So we lift up that family for healing and grace as we turn our hearts to God in a time of silent prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, giver of every good gift, in the stillness we feel your presence near to us, that always present gift, the knowledge that you accompany us on our journey no matter what hardships we face, no matter what joys we are celebrating, that you are there in the midst of it with us. We thank you, O oh God, that we are never alone and that you sent your son, Emmanuel, God with us to remind us that we are never alone on this journey. We thank you that we have one another in this community of faith to lift each other up when we fall, to celebrate with each other in times of joy. We pray that you would be with the members of this community of faith and those beyond these walls who are in need of reminders of your presence and care. We pray for those who are grieving recent losses, for those who have recently come through surgery, for those family members and friends of those who have died over this past week. We pray, O oh Lord, for your comfort and your peace to fill their hearts and to fill our world. We pray for the victims of the school shooting in California. We pray for all those who are victims of public violence or domestic violence, for those who are struggling to find food or work or a place to live in this time. We pray, O oh Lord, that you might open our hearts, that we might use the gifts that we have been given to reach out to those in deepest need in our community and throughout your world. We know we have been given these gifts with a purpose, and on this Stewardship Sunday, we remember that that purpose is to bring honor and glory to you and to lift up those who are outcast, to lift up the stranger, to lift up those who are homeless and hurting. Change our hearts, O oh God. Help us to see your face in those around us. Heal those broken relationships in our midst. Help us to strive to be healers in this world. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the abundance of blessings, the overwhelming grace that you have shown us through Jesus Christ. Help us, O oh Lord, to be truly thankful this day and always. Help no gift to go unnoticed or unappreciated. And may our cup overflow as we reflect on all of your blessings. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, the one who came and taught and lived and died and was raised again for each one of us. 
so that we might have hope of eternal life and freedom from sin. We unite together these prayers using the prayer that he first taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The second reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, second chapter, verses 1 through 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. And his mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each one holding 20 or 30 gallons. And Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Then he said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn it from the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, this day and always, may the words of our mouths, the meditations of our hearts, and the works of our hands be acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength, our hope, and our Redeemer. Amen. Weddings are a lot of work, but I'm guessing you already knew that. Even if you have not personally been involved in planning a wedding, you have seen friends and neighbors and relatives tearing their hair out and yelling at one another about place settings and floral bouquets and bustles, whatever they are, in order to provide a single perfect day for the bride and groom. And eventually you reach that day and everything goes exactly according to plan. Having presided at countless weddings over 13 years of ministry, I can tell you for certain that that is not how it works. Most weddings start a little bit late due to last minute emergencies or a change in plans. The unity candle doesn't light or no one has a match. The flower girl breaks down in tears and will not make her way down the aisle. Or in the case of outdoor weddings in Michigan, Mother Nature has other plans in mind. The shortest wedding I have ever presided over was held at Bowen's Mill down in Middleville, Yankee Springs area, and it was pouring down rain. There was a break in the clouds, and we all ran out to the chapel area set up next to the mill, and ten minutes later, with the next downpour already rolling in, they were married. It wasn't ideal, <laughs> but in many of these cases, nothing goes according to plan, and that's okay. Because a wedding isn't about the details, it is about the marriage. It is about inviting God into a relationship between two imperfect people, and it's all about being able to roll with the changes. 27-year-old Quinn Duane found this out a few years ago at her wedding. She had painstakingly made plans for the wedding and reception of her dreams at Sacramento's four-star Citizen Hotel. The couple, with assistance from their families, had already spent 35,000 non-refundable dollars on the wedding and reception when the groom suddenly called it off. Quinn was heartbroken. 
But instead of canceling everything and giving in to the heartbreak, she decided to turn it into something good. She talked it over with her parents, and together they decided to go ahead with the wedding reception because it was already paid for. But since the traditional wedding guests wouldn't be attending, they went out to the streets and shelters of downtown Sacramento and invited in 120 of Sacramento's homeless families to enjoy the four-star menu at the Grange restaurant. Appetizers, salad, pasta, salmon, sirloin tips. The homeless families were overwhelmed by the experience, and to be honest, so were Quinn and her family. In taking a hardship and turning it into an opportunity to welcome the stranger and the outcast, they took a small step toward building the kingdom of God, while at the same time taking what would have been a devastating memory and turning it into one of great joy and inspiration for many. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus attends a wedding in Cana with his mother Mary and his disciples. In Jesus' time, weddings were celebrations that lasted for days, often nearly a week, in which the wedding ceremony itself blurs right into the wedding reception. It's hard to tell where one ends and the next begins. Wine at that time was an integral part of any wedding celebration, and it was a major expense for families. The quality of the wine was an indication of the wealth or status of the family and society. The worst possible thing that could happen at a wedding reception was for the wine to run out before the celebration was over, because at that point, everyone goes home early. The guests are disappointed and the family is ashamed. It's not the way that you want to start out in marriage. But this is exactly what happens in this case. Mary is apparently one of the first to learn about the issue and goes to tell Jesus about it. And Jesus' response is intriguing. It seems slightly out of character. He pretty much says, what do you want me to do about it? My time has not yet come. Jesus, in this one statement, reveals to us that his actions are governed only by God's will and by God's timing, not by anyone else's desires or even our own desires. Mary still directs the servants to do whatever Jesus tells them to in hopes that he will take action, that God's will is for Jesus to intervene in this situation. Jesus then directs those servants to take six stone jars used for ceremonial washing, sacred jars of 20 to 30 gallons, and to fill them. Clay jars under Jewish law could be considered unclean, depending on what they were used for, but stone jars, whatever their use, were always considered ritually clean and therefore holy. The servants follow Jesus' instructions, filling these stone jars up to the brim, around 150 gallons of water. Jesus, only a few verses earlier, has told the disciples, you will see greater things than these. And now that promise comes true. John doesn't capture for us in the gospel the moment of the miracle, only what results. Jesus tells the servants to draw out some of the water and to take it to the master of the banquet to taste. The master or steward of the wedding doesn't know where it came from, but he declares with surprise that the servants have somehow saved the best wine for last. Jesus took the ritual jars that were empty, filled them up with the traditional water, then transformed it into something new, and not just a little of something new, an abundance of something new, in order to reveal to everyone the abundance of God's generosity and grace, 150 gallons of the finest wine. For comparison, that's the equivalent of 756 bottles of wine, or three modern steel oil drums full of wine. All of this foreshadowing the gift that Jesus will eventually offer to us, a gift that we celebrate in Holy Communion each month, his blood poured out for us. If you look closely at this passage, Jesus uses the word sign instead of miracle to describe this event, and I think that is an important word choice. A miracle can be anything unexpected or unlikely that appears to break the rules of the natural order of creation. But a sign, that's something more. A sign has meaning. It points beyond itself to something deeper. 
And in John, this is the first of many signs that Jesus performs. In addition to pointing to Jesus' later sacrifice for us on the cross, I think this miracle at the wedding in Cana also points to another deeper truth. I would have loved to be there to watch the servants dip their cup into the water jars and see the look on the steward's face when he tastes the new wine. His reaction is priceless, and I heard you chuckle a little bit this morning. Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. According to the ways of this world, we often offer what is best first. We start at the top. But with God, that seems to be turned upside down. And in this miracle, it is shown that God often saves the best for last. That with God, the best is always yet to come. In thinking about that aspect of the story and the sign, I can't help but think about the famous inspirational story by Roger William Thomas, the story of a a woman diagnosed with a terminal illness and given three months to live. She meets with the pastor at her home and tells him which Bible verses she would like to be read at her funeral, which hymns she would like sung, which outfit she would like to be buried in. But then she offers up this strange request. One more thing, I wanna be buried with a fork in my hand. She explains to him how she grew up in the church and how at almost every church meal or potluck at someone's home, someone would inevitably come up to clear the table and tell her, keep your fork. For her, it was an indication that something even better was yet to come. She made this request so that the people would see the fork in her hand at the funeral and ask why it was there, to which the pastor was to answer, Keep your fork, the best is yet to come. And in that moment, the full knowledge and joy of our eternal salvation would be shared. In a way, at the wedding at Cana, Jesus is saying, this is just the beginning. Prepare for signs and miracles, wait and see. Keep your fork. You've tasted the wine of the wedding feast, but I have something even better in store for you. In the end, this miracle is a sign that points forward to Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross, but that also reveals a deeper truth about life, that when we trust God, miracles do happen, and that with God, the best is always yet to come. I have served as your pastor here at Granville United Methodist Church for almost three and a half years now. And in that time, I tell you that I have seen miracles happen. I have seen hearts and lives and this community transformed. I believe you are a stronger, more vibrant, more welcoming, more faithful church than you were only a few years ago. And honestly, my role in that process has only been to encourage you and to bring to life what God had planned. We have had our fair share of hardships along the way as well. It hasn't all been a wedding feast, but together we have made some fundamental and lasting changes and have prepared this church for a future in ministry. When we encounter hardship along the way, or even the unexpected, our first reaction may be to throw in the towel, to surrender to sadness or worry, but to do so is to turn away from the deep and abiding hope that we find through faith in Jesus Christ. My friends, God is still working miracles in our community and right here at Granville United Methodist Church. And this morning, we hold fast to the good news of the gospel. With God, the best is always yet to come. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the signs and miracles that you have performed through your Son that point us to something more, something beyond our understanding, something wonderful that we find even hard to accept, an overwhelming gift that you have given us through him, the gift of forgiveness of sins, the hope of eternal life for all who believe. 
For this overwhelming gift, we give you thanks and praise, and for the knowledge that the best is always yet to come. May we live in anticipation and in great joy, knowing the ways and recognizing the ways that you are working in our lives and in the world around us. Help us to live in the light of eternal hope, hope you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. At this time, I would like, like to invite the ushers to come forward to receive the offering. It is Stewardship Sunday, and so you are welcome. If you have uh, completed filling out your pledge cards for 2020, you are welcome to turn them into the offering plate this morning. Um, you are also welcome, if you'd like a little more time to pray about it, to turn them into the church office anytime this week as well. And as I mentioned, the electronic giving forms are back at the Welcome Center after the service today. Uh, of course, if you are a visitor with us, uh, on Stewardship Sunday, uh, there's no need to turn in a pledge card. There's no need to put anything in the offering plate. You are our guests this morning. Um, but we thank you for being here on this important Sunday in the life of our church as we anticipate the ways in which God will move among us in this new year. May this time of offering be a time of joy and a time of worship. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for every good and perfect gift that you bestow upon us, for the gift of this day and for this hour of worship. We pray that you might transform our lives, that we might live lives of worship. As we dedicate these gifts and anticipated gifts for the coming year, we pray that you might bless them, that they might do your will and work in this community and well beyond these walls, out into your world, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ and lifting up the lost, the lonely, the hurting. We pray all of these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
As we celebrate the gift of God's faithfulness at work in our lives, I would invite you to sing together our closing hymn and hymn of dedication. Number 140 in your hymnals will sing verses one and three of Great is Thy Faithfulness. I hope you'll be able to join us uh, next Sunday uh, as we celebrate the gifts that God has given us uh, with a theme of thankfulness, looking forward to Thanksgiving. It will also be our uh, student ministry Sunday, and so our youth director, Joel Baker, and many of our youth will have roles throughout the service as well. So it will be a wonderful celebration of the ways that God is working here at Granville United Methodist Church. And now receive the benediction. Go forth from this time of worship to live lives of worship with thankful hearts for all that God has done for you, for the signs and miracles that are present each day. May you have eyes to see them, to witness the ways that God is working and to become a part of that greater purpose and plan. Go in God's grace and peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.